Hey, what's up guys? Today we'll be unboxing and setting up the Unify 16 port 150 watt PoE switch. So we're looking at the Unify switch 16 150 watt. It's a managed PoE plus gigabit switch with SFP. Let's see what's inside the box. Ubiquity includes the switch itself, the power cord, sticky feet for use on a desk, screws and mounting hardware, a pair of mounting brackets to mount in the rack, and a quick start guide. The front of the switch features two SFP ports, a reset switch, 16 managed PoE ports, the Unify logo and model number, and the status indicator light. On the rear of the unit, we have the power port, serial and model information, two cooling fans, and a console port. Each side of the unit has holds for ventilation and airflow as well as four threaded holds for attaching the mounting brackets. Up on the screen is the Unify Switch data sheet and as you guys can see there are several models to choose from. Let me highlight the 16 port features. I don't want to read all of these to you guys. You can check these out for yourself. I'll include the link to the data sheet in the video description down below. However, I do want to point out that in addition to 802.3AF and ATPOE, this switch also supports 24 volt passive PoE as well. That being said, let's move on and get this switch adopted and set up in the Unify controller. Okay guys, so I'm logged into my Unify controller, which is hosted out on Amazon Web Services. Currently, I have a Unify 8 port PoE switch, 150 watts, and three UAP AC light access points scattered out throughout my home for optimal coverage. I'm using an Edge Router X SFP, uh, supplying DHCP services, etc. And the reason I bought the 16 port switch, uh, it's twofold. One, I want to expand eventually and get the Unify NVR and a couple of G3 surveillance cameras and place them around my home. But more importantly, I had to move my office from the first floor of my home to the second floor, and the rack is located in the first floor. So my thinking was, put the new 16-port switch downstairs in the rack and move this existing 8-port switch upstairs to the new office where I would be able to then have connectivity for the computers and printers and other devices in the office. So that being said, let's move on and get this um, new switch hopefully adopted. Now to find the switch on the network and set the inform, because I have to set the inform URL to tell the switch where the controller is. I'm going to use the UBNT discovery tool, which is a Chrome plugin that you can download and install. So let's go ahead and launch the discovery tool. Okay, so here it found my edge switch, but let's click on the Unify family and it should find the new Unify switch. Okay, and there it is. And it says the status is pending. There's the firmware version, the MAC address, and the IP address that it got from the DHCP server. All right, so let's click on the action button to set the uniform URL. And remember, I have to set this URL to tell this new switch where the controller is located. And by default, the uniform URL is looking locally for a local controller. So let's replace this with my uniform URL for my cloud controller and say execute. Okay, let's minimize this screen now and let's go back to the Unify controller and let's refresh and see if the controller, if the uh, switch shows up. Now sometimes it doesn't and you have to SSH into the switch to actually set the uniform URL, but let's see if the um, UBNT discovery tool uh, works. Okay, and there it goes. So it found the new switch and it says that it's pending adoption. So let's go ahead and click adopt. And it says that it's adopting, but we might have to go and SSH in and set the URL, the uniform URL, the inform URL again. Let's try by setting the inform URL one more time through the unified device discovery tool and if not we'll SSH in. Okay, let's say execute. 
and let's refresh the unified controller. And now it's provisioning. Okay, so we did not have to SSH in this time to the switch, but I have seen where setting the inform URL with the um, UBNT discovery tool um, does not work. Refresh and we should be connected soon. Okay, so the switch is done provisioning and we now have a connected status. So the first thing I want to do is let's change the name on the switch. So let's come on over to uh, configuration and let's click an alias and give this a friendly name. So let's call it Unify 16 port POE switch 150. And let's say save. And there we have, we've got the name changed. And now the switch is provisioning again. Excellent. Let's take a look. And I see that there is an upgrade for the switch. So I'm going to go ahead and upgrade the switch and I'll come back as soon as the upgrade is done. Yes. So the switch took about four to five minutes to complete the upgrade process and provision and come back to the actual connected status. So the last thing I want to do is just set a static IP address. So let's click on the switch. Let's come over and click on configuration and on network. We're going to configure IP. We're going to switch it from using DHCP to static IP. And this way I could always find the switch on the network and know where it's located. So I'm going to change the DHCP address to um, .30. Subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. The gateway is going to be the gateway of the edge router. And I'm going to put in my preferred and alternate DNS servers and queue the changes and then say apply changes. And the switch is provisioning. And there you go guys. Now we're connected and you can see the IP address changed to dot 30. So let's take a look at all the devices in the Unify controller. And we have the three UAP AC lights as well as the Unify 8. And now the new Unify 16 port PoE switch 150. So there you go guys. Um, I know this video was a little longer. It was an unboxing and a setup and I hope you found it helpful and useful. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel. Please like and please share. My name is Tony with Quick Tech Solutions. As always, thank you for watching. See you next time.